Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make these cozy winter mittens. So they feature this small, simple little cable design. So it is worked in front post double crochet stitches and I've twisted them and then I have double crochet stitches worked in between. So these mittens match the hat that I've just released as well, the Winter Wonder hat and I will be showing you how to make the child size mitten in today's tutorial. So I'm using natural alpaca yarn from Mary Maxim and this yarn has been provided to me by Mary Maxim for this tutorial. And I'm going to be showing you this tutorial in the color thistle today. You'll need two hook sizes for this pattern. So you'll need a 4.5 millimeter as well as a five millimeter crochet hook. And these are streamline hooks from Furls Crochet and I'll have a link in the description box on where you can purchase them as well as the hook tray. So we'll begin with the five millimeter hook and we'll make a magic ring. So I'm wrapping the yarn around my index finger three times, taking my hook, sliding it through, grab your first loop, pulling it through and we'll chain two. Then we'll work six double crochet in the ring. Okay, so once you have your six stitches, we'll pull the ring tight. So only one, when I pull my tail, only one loop pulls in. That loop that's pulled in, I'm gonna take it now, give it a tug, and it will tug the other loop in tight. So then just take your tail. We'll now slip stitch in our first double crochet under those loops to join. Chain two. And now we're going to be doubling up our stitch count. So I'm going to work two front post double crochets in each stitch around. So one. So we're going under and up, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and then back down around the same stitch so that we're doubling up our stitch count. Okay, so complete that around so that you have 12 stitches. And now we'll slip stitch in the first front post double crochet to join, chain one, and now we're going to work across these post stitches. So one, two, and now we need to increase by adding a double crochet. So what we're going to do is work back into this same stitch, a double crochet. So we've worked the post around the post of the stitch and now we're going to work a double crochet into the top of that same stitch. Then we'll work a front post across the next two and a double crochet into the top of that second stitch. See the two loops right here. And we're repeating that all the way around. So a front post on the next, a front post double crochet on the next, and then a double crochet working into that same stitch, going through those two loops working a double crochet. 
Okay, so I'm finishing with a double crochet and I'm going to slip stitch to join. I now have 18 stitches. I've gone up this round another six stitches. I'm going to chain one and I need to double up the double crochet stitch now. So we're going to work a front post double crochet on the next two. And then in the double crochet, we're gonna work two double crochet stitches. So one, two. Front post on the next two. And then our increase happens in the double crochet stitch. So one, and two. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that all the way around. Okay, so now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of our first front post double to join. Chain one, and now we're going to start into the pattern. We've done our total of increases. So we've increased up to 24 stitches. This pattern does need to be worked in multiples of four. So now we're going to skip this first post. We're going to do a front post double crochet into the next. Yarn over and working a front post double crochet back into the skip stitch. And this is what gives us that twisted cabled look. Double crochet in the next two. Skip the front post in the next. We will do a front post double crochet. Yarn over and then working back into that skipped front post, we'll do a front post double. A double crochet in the next two. And repeat that around. Okay, so we end with our two double crochet I'm going to slip stitch in our first front post double to join. Chain one. And now we need to just work across the front post doubles, but because they're twisted, it can be a little tricky. You just want to make sure that you're getting into that first one that's sort of underneath. Work a front post double and then a front post double on the next. And then we'll work a double crochet in the next two. And again, you sometimes you can just pull them apart to kind of see the first the stitch you're working into. So we're working that front post double and a front post double. Double crochet in the next two. Okay, and now I'll slip stitch in the first front post double to join, chain one, and then we'll be back to repeating row five and six. So we skip the next front post double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet back into the skip stitch. Double crochet in the next two. Okay, and we'll continue to work repeats of round five and six now until we have a total of 14 rounds. Okay, so I'm going to work those rounds now off camera and then I'll meet you back up for the next step. Okay, so I have worked now my total of 14 rounds. What I find makes it really easy when you're looking at counting these rounds is I know that my first twisted stitch is on round five and then round six pops up a little bit. You can see this row pops up. 
So 6, 8, 10, 12, and this is 14. So I know I have my 14 rounds. Now, this is where the mitten will fit onto your little one's hand. So if you're good with the width of this, you can always check the length. As you can see, I'm going to need more length um, for my mitt. And let's say you put this on, on and it's seeming kind of big. You can always adjust how many rounds you have here to make the mitt fit maybe your child a little bit better. And that's just a way you can customize it just because everyone's little hand may be a little bit different, longer fingers or shorter fingers. So this gives you a little flexibility to adjust if you need to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be working now this section and both mitts are going to be made the same way. You can see our join is in here, but it's hardly noticeable. So I'm not making a left or right mitt. I'm making the mitts exactly the same way because they look good on both sides. It doesn't really look like one side is distinguished over the other side. So this makes it really easy. What you're going to do is work this round all the way around and at the end we're going to be doing a chain for the thumb. So we'll chain one and our 15th round is going to be the round where we're crossing over. So I'm skipping this stitch, working a front post in the next. Back into the skip stitch. So I'm going to continue working around because this is just repetitive from what we've been doing. And then I'm going to meet you up at the end here to show you the next step. Okay, so once you've worked all the way around, we're now going to chain out for the thumb. So I'm going to chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm going to slip stitch our first front post double to join. Chain one. Now you're going to work around still in the pattern. And once you get to that chain, you're going to work double crochets across it. So I'll work back around. Working in our established pattern. So this time we're just working front post double crochets across those twisted stitches. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and I'm coming to the chain. So I want to work across eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to count just to make sure that I don't miss one of the chains. So just work double, cro double crochets across. Okay, so I've worked eight. Now we're going to slip stitch to join. Chain one. You can see now the mitts opening up to make room for making the thumb and you'll come back afterwards to add the thumb on, but we're gonna continue now working this section down to the cuff. And then we'll come back and finish the thumb at the very end. So now we're going to get back into our pattern. 
we're going to cross these over. So back to round five of the pattern and I'm going to work it around to the double crochet stitches and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I've done two double crochets and now we need to get the pattern going at this part of the mid. So here is the two double crochets from our previous round. So now we know the next two we need to cross them like we've done here. So I'm going to skip the next, work a front post double crochet in the next and a front post double crochet back. Double crochet in the next two. Okay, skip the next. Front post double crochet in the next. Front post double crochet in the skipped and then ending with a double crochet in the last two. And then we'll slip stitch and chain one. So now this will be round six of the pattern. And now we have all of the post stitches established, so it will be easier just to work around as normal. So front post double crochet on the next two and then a double crochet in the next two. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I'm gonna slip stitch to join chain one and I'm going to do one more round before I start into some decreases. So I'm going to complete this round the same as round five, doing my cross over stitch and I'll work that all the way around. So this is the 19th round in total. Okay, so I've worked all the way around slip stitch to join, chain one, and the decrease round is going to be really easy. We're going to start out with a front post double crochet on the first two, and then our decrease is going to happen across these two stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, go through the next stitch, pulling up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. So that's a double crochet decrease. And we'll be doing those across the two double crochets around. So I'll work a front post double now in the next two. We're on the next two and then another decrease. So yarn over. Go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, going through the next stitch, pull through two, pull through three. So I'm gonna repeat this all the way around. So once you get all the way around, we'll slip stitch to join chain one and now we're going to be just working around but now instead of two double crochets between we're only going to have one so I just want you to do two more rounds working your pattern but instead we just now have the one double crochet in between so this round I'm crossing them over and then the next round we'll just be working the front post is normal. So I'm gonna complete that off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so you should have 24 stitches and I'm going to just slip stitch to join. I have changed over now to the 4.5 millimeter hook. I'm gonna chain one and work single crochets in every stitch around. 
for a total of 24. Okay, so next we're going to slip stitch to join once you've worked around the 24 stitches. And then we're going to do the join as you go band. Now, this one I've done 12 stitches. I'm thinking I may increase it by two stitches for the pattern. So whether you do 12 or 14 is not a big deal. So, so my mittens match, I'm gonna stick with 12. So that means I'm going to chain out 13. Okay, and then we're going to work single crochets across the chain. So in the second chain from the hook, work a single crochet. And down the chain. Okay, so you should have 12 stitches. Now we're going to skip the first stitch that we slip stitched into. You can see the little slip stitch right here. And I'm going to slip stitch into the next two. So we wanna crochet a row for every stitch. So our first row is completed for that first stitch. And now we're going to crochet two more rows for the slip stitches we just made. So I'm gonna skip over the slip stitches and work single crochets through the back loop only. And I like to count as I go to make sure that my stitch count does stay on track. And we'll chain one and turn, crocheting back down the row, single crochets in the back loop only. And once you work all the way down, we're going to slip stitch into the next two. And just keep repeating this all the way around until you have 24 rows worked in total. And you should be ending up at this end when you complete working the band. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work mine up off camera and then I'm going to meet you up once I have these rows completed. Okay, so once you have worked all of your rows, you can double check them by counting by two. So two, four, so the ridges are basically two rows, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and you should be ending up at the top. So I'm going to chain one Fold the band together and I've already fastened mine off, but let's just show you how. We're gonna go through the back loop going across to the chain, starting chain and work a slip stitch. So you're just working slip stitches down through each stitch and I'm just going through the back loop of my last row. Okay, and then you can fasten off and you can pull this through and we're just going to seam this now. So with a yarn needle, you can now weave in your tail. Go back in the opposite direction 
secure your tail and then you can trim. Okay, so now we're going to work on crocheting the thumb. So with my larger hook, I'm going to put a slip knot. And I'm going to join into the corner with a slip stitch. Chain one. Now you can see that this part of the pattern is the double crochet stitches. So we're going to work a double crochet in the next two. And you can see our posts here that they're straight. So we're going to twist them to continue as if we were continuing with the pattern. So I'm going to skip the first post, work a front post double in the next, working back a front post double in the skipped. Then we're coming to our next two double crochets. So this part we're working across that chain that we initially made for the thumb hole. We're coming to those posts. So skip the first front post in the next. Front post on a skip stitch. So now as you turn your mitten, we have this section across here. So what we need to do is continue with our pattern working around. So I know I need to do two double crochets and I'm just gonna evenly space them sort of across this double crochet, the side of this double crochet stitch. And then I want to do the posts to match as well. So you can see these posts right here. So what we can do is skip over one, working a front post, and then work a front post back into this one, just so we can continue with our thumb pattern. Now we're going to slip stitch in our first double crochet to join. So now you can see you may have a little bit of gapping and all you're going to do is use this yarn tail at the end. You can go and sort of sew any gapping that you might see. So I'm going to chain one and for round two, I'll work a double crochet. the next two. Then I'm going to work a front post in the next two. And I'm just going to repeat that around. And also you have 12 stitches. I do give you the option in the pattern to decrease the thumb. If you want to decrease it, you can narrow these two doubles down to just one. But I am just going to keep this thumb at this stitch count but that is an option if you want to narrow it out. You 
You can always change to your smaller hook on this part if you wanted to make the thumb a little bit smaller. I'm just keeping it consistent with the rest of the mitten, so I'm sticking with the larger hook. Once we get the thumb going here, it's a little bit easier. It's a little snug working these stitches in. Okay, and once you get around, you can slip stitch that to join chain one. So our next row will be double crochet. And then we're going to cross over so we're skipping the front post and then working front post in the next and then working a front post back in the skip stitch so continuing with our established pattern Once you get all the way around, you can slip stitch to join. Chain one. And for round four, we're working our doubles and then front post doubles in the next two and repeat that around. Okay, so once we get to the end, we're going to slip stitch to join. We're going to fasten off with the tail for sewing. Pull my yarn needle, th pull my yarn through. Take your yarn needle. And we're going to weave through every other stitch. So skip one stitch, weave through the next. Skip one stitch, weave through the next. Okay, and then you'll just pull tight and we'll continue to do some weaving. Pull that thumb hole in nicely. Okay, you see how that looks. Now, if you needed it a little bit longer, you can always do another round. And also making sure these chains are loose when you change chain the thumb. I think I maybe went a little too snug on this one. You can see it will pull in slightly. So make sure to keep that chain loose when you are doing the thumb hole, which I made a note in the video about that and in the pattern. And then you just weave back in the opposite direction and then you can trim that tail. So now making sure you've left a long enough tail to deal with any of the gapping it's a good idea. So you can just take this, whoops, you didn't get that on right. That's why it's a good idea to make sure your tail's long. Oh, 
I just do some simple just stitching to stitch any gapping at the thumb. Just work my way around the thumb just to make sure. And don't pull the stitching too tight. You don't want to distort the look, but you just want to make sure that it's not going to be wholly there. So there, then you can weave back as well. I'm running out of tail here on mine. And again, this pulling right here is just from that thumb chain. So making sure that you don't chain too tight will give the thumb a nice look like this. So any other tails, your inside tail, just make sure you have woven everything in. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Make sure to click through the description box below this video where you'll find the links to the pattern with all of the sizes as well as to the blog. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.